Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on image generation. In this course, we're going to walk through how to train your own LoRa model using Flux Gym to create a consistent and realistic AI influencer. A lot of you guys asked how to create a consistent character after watching my video on generating realistic portraits using the ultra real fine tuned Flux model. So in this course, we're diving deep into exactly that. I'll walk you through the full process of building a consistent, reusable AI character from start to finish. We'll be focusing on training your LoRa on top of the Flux fine-tuned model to get much more polished and realistic results. You also learn how to prepare your data sets for consistent character output and use various comfy UI workflows that I've already set up for local training. With the created LoRa model, you will be able to mix it with other LoRa models like Samsung Ultra Real to create any uncensored photos you want, unlike using other public AI tools that doesn't allow you to create uncensored images. So you will have a lot of freedom when generating your AI influencer models. Now if you're running this locally, especially the Flux fine-tuned GUF model, I recommend at least 16GB of VRAM for smooth performance you can still run it on lower VRAM setups, but be prepared for longer processing times. If you don't have a strong GPU, I prepared a RunPod template you can use to train in the cloud with ease. I have templates for generating realistic videos and creating training datasets using Flux Context. And there's also a Flux Gym RunPod template you will need to use to train your LoRa. All the resources and workflows including the prompt sheet as well are available exclusively to my members. Once you subscribe, you'll get full access to everything. Plus, you'll be invited to our private support channel where I personally help you troubleshoot and answer any questions. Think of this as a unique opportunity to learn, create, and grow your AI influencer project with real support behind you. To train your LoRa in this course, you'll need both Comfy UI and Flux Gym downloaded locally. If you haven't set them up yet, I recommend starting with Comfy UI. Head over to the Comfy UI GitHub repository and download the Windows portable version. Once downloaded, unzip the folder and launch it using the run NVIDIA GPU.bat file to ensure it uses your GPU. Next, make sure you have the custom node manager installed for Comfy UI. To do this, visit the custom node manager's GitHub directory and git clone the repository into your custom nodes folder inside Comfy UI. If you see an error using git is not recognized, make sure to install the git on your machine first. Once the custom node manager installed, you'll be able to easily install any missing custom nodes automatically when you load up my provided workflows into Comfy UI. In the first part of training your own LoRa, we'll start by generating a realistic portrait photo to use as a base image. To create this image, we'll be using the Flux fine-tuned model combined with the Samsung Ultra Real LoRa for enhanced realism. The full workflow and prompt are included in the resources folder, or you can also find this workflow in my previous video. Using the portrait generator prompt, I created a sample image of a realistic blonde woman to demonstrate the results. One key tip here, make sure you set the correct aspect ratio for the image you generate. This is important because when training your model in Flux Gym, maintaining a consistent aspect ratio across your dataset does help improve training accuracy and image consistency. For example, if Flux Gym is trained on 2x3 aspect ratio images, then generating the images using your trained LoRa in the same 2x3 format will yield better results. You can definitely use other aspect ratios for different datasets, but your chances of getting clean, consistent outputs will be much higher if you stick to the one aspect ratio throughout the dataset. In this case, since I want this character to be suitable for Instagram portrait content, I've chosen the 2 by 3 aspect ratio to match that style. The example prompt to generate a portrait image is found in the workflow itself. You can tweak it however you want to create an AI influencer of your choice. Also, I want to make a quick note on backgrounds. Avoid using any solid color backgrounds in your training dataset. While having one or two is fine, relying too heavily on solid colors background can lead to poor quality image when generating images with real world scenes or textured environments. Now that we have our base portrait image, the next step is to expand our dataset by creating multiple variations of this AI influencer. Thanks to the release of the Flux Context edit models, 
it's much now easier to generate realistic variations of the original image, especially for different angles and expressions without needing complex setups. In my experience, this is currently the easiest and most efficient way to create high quality portrait photos from your base image. Previously, I used character sheets with control net to manipulate face angles and poses. The resulting character sheet image is very low resolution, and while flux upscaling method does help increase the resolution, I noticed it often deteriorated the facial details I had in the original character sheet. With flux context edit, it is much easier to generate a diverse and coherent dataset which is perfect for training a consistent LoRa model. When it comes to using Flux Context, you'll find three different workflow options in the resource folder, the Dev, Pro, and the Max workflow. The Pro and Max versions are especially powerful and they're excellent at generating diverse variations of your characters with different backgrounds, poses, and angles, all while keeping the character's core features consistent. That said, I found the dev version to be more than sufficient in many cases, especially for simple outfit changes or side angle shots. You can use the Flux Context dev model to create the side view portrait of your AI influencer. I've left some of the example prompts in the resource folder. However, one of the biggest difference I've noticed between the dev and the pro and max version is in color fidelity. The Pro and Max models tend to produce images with color contrast and tones that closely match the original base image, whereas the dev model can sometimes fall short in this area. For a detailed comparison, I've also created a video for comparing all different models, so you can refer to the results there. Also, since creating high quality data set is very important, I would say using the Pro and Max model is pretty reasonable as it costs around 4 cents per generation for Pro model and 8 cents per generation for the Max model. Since we only need around 20 to 30 images for a solid LoRa training data set, it's a small investment for high quality results. Now you might be asking, why not just use Flux Context to generate all the influencer images directly? That's a fair question, and technically, you can do that for simple one-off variations, but there are a few important reasons why I recommend creating your own LoRa. First is ongoing costs. Continuously generating images using the Pro and Max model adds up to your costs over time. For your long-term learning, it's to run everything locally, and training a LoRa allows you to do that exactly. Second is better result. From my experience, a custom-trained LoRa yields better consistency and detail especially when combined with other LoRa's like Samsung Ultra Real or NSFW focused models. And third is creative freedom. The Pro and Max models are heavily censored, which makes it difficult to generate characters in certain outfits or more stylized content. With your own LoRa, you'll have full control over what your character can wear, how they pose, and what kind of content you want to create. In short, using Flux Context is a great starting workflow for building your dataset, but training your own LoRa unlocks the full potential of consistent, reusable, and fully customizable AI influencer. The Flux Context Dev model requires a local GPU setup to run. In contrast, the Pro and Max versions operate by connecting to ComfyUI through an API, which means they run in the cloud and require credits in your account balance to generate images. You can refer to my previous video on how to set up Flux Context to run Pro and Max version in ComfyUI. If you'd like to use the base Flux Context model for NSFW content, I've included a workflow for uncensored context editing. This setup incorporates the JD3's Nudity Context LoRa model, which enables advanced edits such as removing clothing from the subject. This is only if you want to add naked photos as part of the training dataset. An example prompt is already provided within the workflow, so you can try it yourself and see how it performs. Another clever method to expand your image set for LoRa training is by using the image to video workflow and extracting high quality frames from the generated video. One of the best models for this is the One 2.1 Fusion X model, which produces excellent video quality. More recently, the One 2.2 model has been released and shows great performance even on local setups. So I'll be adding the new workflow for One 2.2 video model in the future. I've already shared a full workflow for running the models in previous video to run One Fusion X model. One Fusion X essentially merges multiple high-performing LoRa's to create a new kind of model, one that's faster, more cinematic, and capable of coherent motion and fewer steps. 
I've explained in details what all these LoRa's do in my previous video, so you can refer to that for more details. To use the One Fusion X workflow, you can either input the portrait image you created earlier or any image generated through Flux Context. Once the video is generated, you can capture specific frames that show subtle movements, head turns, or expression changes. These make for excellent additions to your training dataset. Use any basic video editor like CapCut to pause the video and capture the exact frame you want and export it as an image. One Fusion X is excellent at creating most of these small movements and head turns, but it is not very good at creating 360 rotation of the AI influencer to generate these side views. That's why you can use the One 360 rotation LoRa with the One 2.1 model Use a specific prompt in the workflow to generate the 360 rotation of the image. You can also run this on the run pod. For even higher quality video generation, you can look into private video models like Kling 2.0 or Kling 2.1. These models are capable of generating 360 degree character rotations, which are perfect for creating side profile images or videos with natural movement and pose. Another important set of images we want to generate are facial expressions. In your folder, there's a workflow called Expression Editor, which allows you to create a wide range of expressions for your AI influencers. This is great for adding emotional diversity to your dataset while keeping the character consistent. Another thing you want to consider is outfit variations in your dataset. You have a couple of options here, which is to use Flux Context Editing to modify the character's clothing, or use one of the workflows in my folder called Flux Filled Impaint Clothes Swap. This updated workflow allows you to upload any outfit image and apply it to your model. Unlike the older version, this new workflow removes a visible seams around the clothing, which was a common issue in my previous tutorial. Another alternative to Flux Fill model is the CAD VTON workflow, which also supports clothes swapping. I've also included the workflow for this in the resource folder. With all these different variations of the workflow, I recommend to create about 20 to 30 images for generating high quality datasets, but make sure to use images that have all consistent facial features in the images. Now that we have all the data images using the workflows I've provided, it's time to load up Flux Gym and start training your LoRa model. You can install Flux Gym by visiting the GitHub repository. There are a couple of ways to install it, but I personally prefer the manual installation method. You can go to the install manually section and follow all the instructions below. We want to train our LoRa model on a fine-tuned Flux model by Dan Rissi. You can also use the default dev model, but training it on the Flux fine-tuned model makes it more compatible to our workflow later. To set your custom model, navigate to the folder where you installed the Flux Gym, find the file named model.yaml, right-click the file and open it in any text editor of your choice. By default, Flux Gym includes three preset models you can train on. To train on another model instead, copy the text I provided on the page and paste it on the model.yaml file. Once you do this and reload Flux Gym, you should see the Flux fine-tuned model as one of the options in the model list. This small tweak ensures that your LoRa model will be fully optimized for use with the Flux fine-tuned base model, leading to better image quality and more consistent outputs. Once you've launched Flux Gym, you'll start by entering a name of your LoRa model. In this case, I'll name mine Katie. You can also use the same name as the trigger word. For VRAM settings, select your VRAM configuration based on your GPU. If you have a GPU with more than 24GB of VRAM, select the 20GB option to speed up training. If you encounter a memory error, it means your GPU has less VRAM. In that case, switch to the lower VRAM setting. Now we want to drag and drop the image dataset you created into Flux Gym. Once the images are uploaded, click on the Add AI Captions button using the Florence 2 model. This will automatically generate natural language captions for each image, which are important for training Flux-based LoRa's. The Florence 2 model generally does a solid job labeling these images with relevant context. For the training setting, I usually leave repeat train per image the default value of 10, especially when working with 20 to 30 images. For the max train epoch, I recommend setting this between 8 and 12. Going up to 16 is good, but a lower number usually gives you a good balance between training speed and quality. Once everything is set, just hit start training. 
When you start training in Flux Gym, it will automatically fetch the fine-tuned model from the Hugging Face repo. It will download also the clip models the first time you begin training. Once the training is finished, your LoRa model will be saved in the Flux Gym slash output folder. The number beside these multiple LoRa models trained reflect the training steps measured in increments. So you want to get the most recently trained LoRa model, which is the one without any numbers here. This is to choose a version that best captures the subject before quality drops. So if you want to, you can test the ones without lower training steps as well. Drag and drop the LoRa model into your ComfyUI slash model slash LoRa folder. Open up ComfyUI and load up this workflow called Flux Character LoRa and Samsung Ultra Real. Using this workflow, you can use both the Character LoRa and the Samsung Ultra Real LoRa combined. And also, if you want to add another LoRa model, you can just use the LoRa model loader only node and attach it like the Samsung Ultra Real and the character LoRa that you created. You can also tweak the strength model value and experiment the results that you get. Personally, I set the value to anywhere between 0.75 to 0.9. Use the trigger words of the LoRa models in the prompt. And as a test, I'm going to create a photo of my AI influencer with casual clothes holding a coffee at a cafe. With a LoRa model that is trained on about 10 images, the result is pretty good. Even with images that are created very fast with Flux Context, I get very consistent AI influencer images that have high realism without any plastic looking skin. As I mentioned before, you can find all the workflows in my members page and feel free to join my Discord channel and ask any questions or share some of the incredible workflows and results in the channel. Thanks a lot for watching.